the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Sheridan is dying. Even the most ignorant of laymen could determine that fact. The wax-like face, the emaciated body, the rasping breath that precedes the last death rattle. In the huge baronial bedroom, he faces his only living relative, Barry Holden, a great-grand-nephew, a fortunate young man who is the only heir to one of the richest if not the richest man in the world. Fortunate? Our mystery drama, The Imp in the Bottle, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars William Redfield. I'll be back shortly with Act One. A man is over 90, and you are 24, with your life just beginning, why not humor a dying man's request? But you didn't expect a minor gesture could cause that piercing, shattering, evil scream that shriveled your tolerance to a shivering fear. What in God's name was that? Nothing in... God's name. It came from that damnable black him. He mured in the prison. He thought he might escape at last. From this thing in the bottle? That's that's crazy. It's no bigger than a large fly. As long as he stays in the bottle. Oh, Barry. I have no right. If I were not so afraid... No, look, wait. Let me go and get Dr. Haney. No, no, no. This is just between us and I have very little time. So let me speak. Uncle, don't, please. Don't interrupt. You had every expectation to be my only heir. And you are so indicated in my will. But... Do you know what my estate will be if I should pass on still owning that black minion of the Antichrist? Nil, nothing, zero. Look, Uncle, I don't think this is the right time to worry about estates. This is exactly the right time. First, if I die still in possession of that imp of darkness, everything I have, and I'm the house, the corporation, the wealth, even... I, myself, become his possession. Oh, poor Barry. You think you are listening to an old man's ravings. Okay, so we're back to that dirty black spider or whatever it is in the bottle. I'll buy him. That's simple. Now, does that solve it? Not by a long shot. First, you have to know the terms. Okay, brief me. When I was you... Your age, I was in Venice, and I bought that bottle with a black thing in it for not much more than ten dollars. I was always a sucker for legends of any kind. The lure of the bottle imp was it legend. If you could find the right person, whoever you were, you would command anything in the world you desired, gold or money. At the snap of your fingers. That's what that dirty little thing there is? Oh, 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 oh. I laughed at the notion of its power. Except that it does possess it. And once you know that, the whole contract gains its own belief. And what is the whole contract? That while a person owns this dark imp in the bottle, any request that concerns money, gold, or wealth, no matter how unreasonable, will be satisfied. And that to dispose of this creature and its spell, you must sell it for less than your original price. Oh. Here, seven dollars and forty. Five, 
Five dollars is enough. Okay. Cheap at nearly half the price. Oh, think first, Barry. Think. Remember, it will keep you rich as long as you live. But remember, too, if you do not sell it for less than you paid for it before you die, your soul will surely rot in hell for eternity. Cheer up, Uncle. You've made your sale. Your imp in the bottle is my problem from now on. I'd no sooner made that statement than I felt a burning sensation in my pocket. It was sheer reflex action to reach in and pull out the bottle containing the evil black bug. I glanced at my uncle. He had sunk back against the silk pillow cover, his face the corpse white of the dead. But its expression one of peace and relief. You'd better go in, Dr. Haney. I'm afraid he's gone. Oh, very well, Barry. It was inevitable, you know. Oh, I know, I know, but I... I'm going to miss him a lot. That makes two of us. I'll let you know in just a minute. Thank you. I hope I'm not premature, but I'm sorry. Thanks, Mr. Barnes. You're going to miss the old man in a lot more ways than one, son. Hmm? What does that mean? You know, I haven't been able to talk any real business with him almost the whole past week, and... Well, what's the scoop, Mr. Lawyer? Disaster. The whole empire's going to topple. Sheridan Enterprises? Jasper is mortgaged up to the eye teeth, overextended. He's so deep in debt that if things went under, he couldn't even pay his credit as a penny on the dollar. You're trying to tell me that Jasper is broke? Unless he's got piles of money stashed away in Switzerland, Lebanon, the Bahamas, or some secret corner of the world. The only thing he'll leave you is debts. The pity of it is, if he were alive, he'd find a way out of all this mess. He's done it time and again. The man was a financial genius. Uh, he's gone, all right. Poor old Jasper. But he looks at peace. He certainly looked like he left you well provided for, Barry, if that's any consolation. Uh, well provided for, perhaps. A consolation? That remains to be seen. Lawyer Barnes insisted that I dine with him that night to discuss business he said, and for a rather special reason, might lighten the dismal occasion. I accepted for reasons of my own, which were blown right out of my head the moment I met his special reason. Ah, oh, there you are, Barry. Just in time for a mint julep in honor of my guest. Oh? I'd like you to meet the daughter of an old, old friend of mine in the Deep South, Miss Felicia Alice Breedenhall. Oh, my pleasure, Miss Breedenhall. <laughs> Let me begin with my whole usual little speech. Oh, huh? is it a stem winder or just short and sweet? <laughs> oh, now you're putting me on. All I wanted to say was that no one my size should be saddled with a name as long as Felicia Alice Breedenhall. And since the diminutive for both my first names happens to be Alicia, can we settle for that? By all means. My name happens to be, for example, Barry Norton Stewart Farrington Creecraft Ain. <laughs> With a hyphen between the last two. But you may call me just plain Barry, Alicia. Oh. Uh, I'm really sorry. We shouldn't be joking under the circumstances. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. Jasper would have gotten a kick out of you. He lived his life and didn't miss a thing. How many years, Mr. Barnes? Pretty close to 97. Yeah, and he'd had it, too. He wanted to go. No, don't worry, Alicia. He picked the right moment. Here's your julep. Good stiff one. I imagine you can use it, Barry, after a little talk before noon. You and I are going to have to get together tonight, you know. Mm, you know it. That's just what the man ordered. Oh, I didn't think you'd be so eager for our talk. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about our talk. I was talking about the drink and the lady who comes along with it. Leisha, even after just one long, cool swallow, I apologize about the name nonsense. My name is plain old Barry Norton, NMI, as we used to say in the armed services. NMI? Uh, no middle initial. <laughs> Barry's good enough for me anyway. You gonna be staying up north long? Oh, that depends. Oh, that's the dinner bell. If we keep Mrs. Grimes waiting one moment, I might lose her. I have no intention of doing so. Yeah. You seem so 
preoccupied ever since we left after dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alicia. I am. Got a lot on my mind. Uh, how long is your stay up here going to be? A long, long time, I hope. Ah, now that's just the same thought I had in mind for you. But it may not be too long if I don't get a job before my money runs out. You mean that's the only problem? Oh, you can joke. You don't know what it is to be poor. Oh, you want to bet? You know what my entire capital is as of this moment? Two dollars and 43 cents. Plus two trillion and 43 billion little old greenbacks your great uncle left you. Mm, supposing I was to tell you Jasper left nothing. Not a cent. Just a collection of monumental debts. I wouldn't believe you for a moment. Well, let me put this whole proposition on another basis. Supposing I didn't have a dime. Would you marry me tomorrow, this minute, if I really didn't have a dime? And no particular prospects, and I asked you. You haven't even found out if I even like you. Ah, uh, uh, no, this is no holds barred time, Leisha. I think you do at least like me. Enough to think about marrying me? Mm. They warned me life went a little faster up north. Okay, I'll fade you, Mr. Gambling Man. I do like you. But I've had too many years growing up just one mitted jump above poor white. So the answer to your question is if you didn't have a dime and no particular prospects, I'd pick up my bell bottoms and run like hell in case you lassoed me with black magic charm. Ah. Uh -huh. All right. Give me 24 hours to find out where I stand. Then I'll know just where we stand. Mr. Barnes, I won't be back tonight. But you promised. I have to go over this whole business situation with you, and just because of Leisha, you... Uh, no, I, I know, I know. I won't say this has nothing to do with Leisha, but by later tonight, I may be able to give you some better news and relieve your mind about financial affairs. I'm holding what gamblers call an ace in the hole. Now, keep your lawyer's fingers crossed that it pays off. <laughs> was holding in my hand was the imp in the bottle. And with my own fingers crossed, I took it back to Uncle Jasper's house. With shaking fingers, I twisted the cap of the little bottle. And suddenly it came off with an explosive whoosh that rocked me on my heels and turned my blood to rainwater. Out of the narrow opening, a great foaming black cloud burst like an atomic bomb. The room reeked of fire and brimstone, and the whole house rocked and shook and seemed to disintegrate. There are things seemingly beyond our ken that brush against us every day. Eventually, there is an explanation, simple or complicated, an explanation that suits the limit of our world. But is there another explanation that suits another world? Something so dark and mysterious and mind-boggling that we refuse to accept it? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. young man in this day and age who instead of inheriting a fabulous fortune finds himself humoring his dying relative by buying from him a small medical file containing an unidentified black form supposedly capable of producing unlimited wealth is something like this possible in the 20th century we're about to find out <laughs> Choking through the black fumes <clears throat> as a swirling wind began to dissipate them. <clears throat> the room seemed to have disappeared entirely. I was mainly conscious of the colossal legs, the muscles braced under the thick, bristling hair. And as my eye traveled upwards, the monstrous, hirsute body, leathern skinned and humpbacked. The head was small and ridiculous for the gargantuan body, and the voice matched it. Yes, Master. What is your desire? Are you... Are you the black thing that was imprisoned in that bottle there? I am the bottled imp, doomed by Lucifer to be cut vine, until I bring him 
her soul. What, you mean I can actually request anything of you and you will satisfy it? As long as it is gold or what money will buy, all you have to do is ask and it is yours. You see, my only way to freedom is to trap your soul or some other. I have no choice. You are the only one who has any free choice. What choice? Sell me for less than you paid for me, and you go free. And whatever money you've given me, or helped me to gain? You cannot have it both ways, master. That disappears with me. And must I free you from the bottle every time I have a request? No. I have no right to freedom of any kind, and until I deliver a soul. Well then, get back in the bottle. The great black presence was sucked inexorably like a pile of dust back into the bottle. And in the blink of an eye, I was back in my own room. And trapped in the bottle was the dark, shapeless mass of the devil's apprentice. The die was cast as far as I was concerned. Of course, I knew I should see my local psychiatrist, but just in case black magic hasn't gone clear out of style. Abracadabra, right on the bed. $250,000 in hundreds and fifties like pow! quarter of a million, as though I had asked for another hot dog. Oh, man, I don't know what I'm getting into. But it sure solves a lot of problems. Hmm. Strange. I thought he had everything filed with me. When I saw how serious the situation was, I tried to talk the situation over with Jasper, but he refused to discuss the whole subject. I can't understand Well, perhaps he was waiting for a messenger. What messenger? The one that gave me the envelope. I can't understand why this didn't come to me. After all, I am his lawyer. And I'm his heir. That's true, of course. And I was in the house. Well, what's the difference anyway? This solves all our problems, doesn't it? Uh, Financially, I mean. Oh, absolutely. Huge deposits in top banks all over the world. More than enough capital to put the conglomerate in the best shape of its life. My congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. But it's... It's still only money. Which you are very careless about, if you will forgive an old man for putting in his oar. Oh, Barnes, I'm not only happy to have you put in your oar, but you're going to be running the whole ship from now on. Why aren't you going to be taking over the business? Oh, no. Not me. Then what are you going to do? I'm going to get married. If the lady will have me. But then you'll have to have a job. No, 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 no. I have no head for figures, except the right kind. Uh, which reminds me... May I call the lady? If you think she won't object to... Oh, heavens, it's almost one. Well, she may start off mad, but I have a feeling she'll end up forgiving me. Do I know this young lady? Well, you ought to. You introduced me to her tonight. Leisha? Mary, how can you talk about marrying a girl you don't even know? (laughs) Hello. Ah, Leisha? Who is this? You know, I was sound asleep. It's Barry. Barry? What are you doing calling me? Do you know it's nearly one o'clock in the morning? Well, I just wanted to tell you that I'm all through with dull old business and the whole world is now our oyster and even if you won't marry me tonight, how about that date we almost missed? At ten minutes to one a.m.? Well, that's when the big city really comes alive. Look, I'll pick you up in 45 minutes. It'll be a night to remember. At the moment, it's a night I want to forget. Well, you'll never really be able to tell that, will you, unless you give it a try? Huh, Leisha? <laughs> you nut, Barry. You absolute nut. Make it 50 minutes. It'll give me time to put some perfume behind my ears. Bye. When I invited you to dinner earlier this evening, Barry, it had nothing to do with Leisha. She turned up unexpectedly. As a matter of fact, had I been playing... Uh, marriage broker. You would have been the last person in some ways that Oh, I... Barnes, relax. The greatest thing you ever did for me in your life was to introduce me to Leisha. Take you back home? Mm, no. 
That's good, solid New Orleans blues, man. Mm-hmm. And the martini? It won't knock me out. But I don't know about another round. Oh, what's your stand on walking? Great. As long as I can stand. And I can stand. Don't worry. Good. Up Fifth Avenue to the Plaza Hotel. Got a penny? No, sir. My mad money comes in slightly higher denomination. Oh, you didn't think I'd run out on you? It hasn't happened yet. I just protect myself at all times. Okay, here's a penny. And I have one, too. So we turn our backs on the fountain, throw them in, and wish the best wish we know. Oh, that's the Trevi Fountain in Rome you do that. All right, all right. So we're starting a new trend. Arrivederci, Roma. <laughs> what was your wish? If I tell you, it won't come true. We're next. The night is still young. The small hours club? What's its particular kick? Oh, just the best food in town, nice, slow, quiet dancing, and a wide-open casino from craps to shimmy. Oh, Bear. oh, just stop at the dice. They're mama's children. You stake me a hundred, I'll run it right through their limits. Oh, baby, I seem to have just pushed the important button that turns you on. <laughs> Come on, let's see you roll them. The point is eight. Eight is the point. The lady is riding 15,000, 15,000 a cobber. I have three from you, sir, two from the gentleman next to him. Are there no more takers? Oh, yes, sir, fading 5,000. Thank you, sir. That leaves 5,000 open. Then if there is no one else to cover... Ah, yes, I have a taker. You cover the open five. You are faded, madam. Your dice, the point is eight. Oh, come on, baby. We can't run in any more bad luck. This is our time. Come through for Mama, and away you go. Seven, you lose. Oh, well, it was my own fault. The whole thing was my own fault from the beginning. See, my whole trouble is that I really don't give a damn about money. I mean, if I've got it, great. But if I don't, I'll get by. So the trouble is, I never recognize the fever in others. I certainly didn't unleash anyway. The 15000 was play money to me, the way I was fixed with my own personal little devil in the bottle. But I should have spotted Leisha as a lady who was hooked on gambling and the money that went with it. Here we were just beginning, and I didn't know it, but we were already on the way to the end. are crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. But you, yes. I'm not talking about that. You let me gamble away $15,000 and then take me on a five-cent ferry ride. Well, the last of the big spenders they call me. Oh, baby, just look at that sun coming up over the skyline. Isn't that worth 15 lousy grand? <laughs> I'm going to take off my tie and open up my shirt and enjoy the sun on my manly chest. You could have gotten the sun just for a nickel. Ah, but I might not have been able to persuade you to make the trip. <laughs> I swear to Jonah, you are something else. What? What's that chain you have around your neck? Oh, it's, uh, uh, it's kind of a lucky charm. Oh, may I see? Sure. Here. What? It's just a little old bottle I could get a prescription in. Mm-hmm. That black thing. Oh. oh, Barry, I am sorry. I thought it was a spider, and, and I'm just scared to death of them. And before I knew well, it, I... You, you chucked it overboard. It was an accident. I well, didn't... Well, never mind. It's, it's gone forever now. Does it mean all that to you, Barry? Well, we're getting near the landing. Let me ask you a question right out here in the morning sunshine in front of God and everyone. Are you going to marry me? <laughs> it's like everything else tonight. Crazy. But, Barry, I just guess I'm, I'm going to have to. I mean... <gasps> Barry! What? What is it? The bottle. The chain. And that thing, it's right back around your neck again. How did you do that? I didn't. I guess there is only one way to get rid of this. 
There's something funny going on. Barry, you kind of scare me. No, I, I don't know. Wait, wait a minute, I... wait a minute. As soon as we land, come back up to the house with me. Oh, no, sir. I've already spent the night with you. That's as far as we go this time, man. Oh, Leisha, it's not your lily white body I'm after. Not tonight, anyway. It's just a secret I want to share with you. A secret I guess I've got to share with you before we do get married. <laughs> Will you stop pulling my leg and take me home before I fall asleep? No, I want to prove this to you, Alicia. All right. All right, you little bottle imp. In thousand dollar bills, give back Miss Breeden Hall the money she lost tonight. <clears throat> Look in your bag, Alicia. They are? It's a trick. Not mine. His. As much as I want, any time, anywhere. Just as I told you. No. I, I just can't believe it. Oh, well, I know a way to really prove it to you, Miss Dice Sharper. Now, here's a pair of dice, okay? Roll them as long as you want till you're sure there's nothing kinky about them. Then tell me what number you want to throw and how many times. And the bottle imp will see that it happens. Okay. You can't fool me on this. I know dice, and I know odds. Once I'm satisfied these dice are clean, I'm picking snake eyes. You bring me those up ten times in succession, and I'll believe anything you tell me. Why be pikers? Let's make it twenty. Double ace. Twenty times. Mm-hmm. And it's all true. That's right. Now do you marry me? I... I wouldn't want you to think I was marrying you for your money. <laughs> Let me take the chance on that. Beware, Barry. Games of chance are not your forte. And you don't know... The odds. You're a good-hearted, happy-go-lucky guy who's gotten himself mixed up in something evil. A lot more than he can handle. And perhaps not all the evil is shut up inside the bottle. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Jasper Sheridan's funeral was sumptuous and dignified. In as brief a period as seemed decent, Alicia and Barry were married and started on a worldwide honeymoon that lasted well over two years. If Barry regretted the fact that all of the places had gambling casinos, he was too much in love with his stunning bride to object. Then, at last, they were on their way back to America by boat, on Leisha's insistence. Well, I see you broke the bank again for the second night out. Oh, I'm not always so lucky, Mr. Stavrasis. Oh, you know my name. I was going to introduce myself. I'm flattered, Mrs. Norton. Of course you're not. No more than I am, but you know mine. <laughs> We are birds of a feather, eh, you and I? We have more money than we know what to do with. We gamble. We are both members of the international set. The only difference is you own ships. And I own a rich husband. But there is another difference. Oh? At least one. You are a woman. I am a man. I am surprised your husband doesn't make sure to keep you close to him. Particularly on shipboard moonlight nights. Oh, Barry doesn't sail well. He usually sticks to his cabin unless it's clear as glass. Then I shall hope for a rough crossing. <laughs> Am I to consider that a pass? But most definitely. I am a married woman, Mr. Stavrasis. Marriage is a state of mind, Mrs. Norton. It is no longer the prison it once was. May I hope to see you in New York? 
Perhaps you would come to dinner at my house. With my husband. Or without. That can all be arranged later. Uh, here. Here is my unlisted number. If you should ever need me. And of course, I am of your service for the rest of the voyage. <laughs> Barry. I remember when you used to say that a little more fondly. Your being crazy made some sense then. Oh, and now it makes none? To go out and take some nine-to-five job in a dirty little store as a numbness whatever it is. Numismatist, a collector mm. or seller of old and rare coins. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? It's the only real interest I've ever had in money. Oh. <sighs> Well, you won't make much of it there. Oh, I don't know. With the deal Charlie's offered me, I could do quite well. From twenty to 30000 a year, it's quite a hot business these days. You must be mad. Go work at the conglomerate if you have to work. You can pay yourself half a million a year. Anyway, what's money to us? That's our problem, Leisha. Everything at the moment. I'm just waking up to how gambling has you hooked. And how you have me hooked into being a sort of gigolo. And the source of the hook is this damn thing. So the way to get off the hook is simple. I'm going to sell him. Sell the bottle imp? Oh, but that... That means that everything, everything would be gone. Uh-uh, no, uh, except what I make. We just have to learn to get along on it. But why? Why? Because, honey, it's all wrong. And more and more I'm becoming aware of my immortal soul and how much it means to me. Sell me the bottle. Aren't you concerned with your immortal soul? Oh, Barry, you know I don't believe in that rubbish about after death. Anyway, I could always sell it to someone else. Only you wouldn't have the nerve. Oh, no. Oh, no, Leisha, you are the last person I'd ever sell the imp in the bottle to. Uh, yes? Val, it's Leisha. What a wonderful surprise. <laughs> I may surprise you even more. Would you like to invite me to dinner? You and... I me? said me. <laughs> Consider me surprised even more. <laughs> Just name the night and where you would like to go. Where? Your house. When? As soon as possible. <laughs> No, thanks. I think in view of all you have just told me, Leisha, I will. I want you, no matter what your youth. And I can make you happy physically. I have more money than I need, although never more than I want. <laughs> I will be happy to make a pre-marriage settlement with you. The one thing is the fly in the ointment, the, uh, the imp in the bottle. But that's just a plaything for me. A luck charm. Whether you believe in it or not. A and you can get it for less than five dollars. Why should he sell it to me, a stranger? Why not to you? Because he believes whoever buys it sells his soul to the devil. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that nonsense anymore. What I will discuss is our marriage settlement, your divorce, and your promise to me of faithfulness and a child. If that is agreed, then I promise you I will buy your whatever it is in the bottle tomorrow. Or the first feasible day. Agreed? <laughs> agreed. I knew nothing of this conversation, naturally since Leisha shared little with me these days. Besides, in the first months working with Charlie, I was so fascinated, captivated, drenched in the business of old coins, that I had little else on my mind. It never even occurred to me that Leisha's request for a quick divorce and my granting it, even though I still loved her, had anything to do with a man I vaguely remembered from our transatlantic crossing and newspaper headlines in general. And I really must apologize for my long cross-examination. But my hobby, I must admit, is ceremonial magic. The Kabbalah. The grimoire of the room. 
I suppose you might say all forms of black magic. I see. I envy you your amulet. <laughs> I don't suppose you would consider selling it. Oh, wait a minute. If I thought you knew and understood its history. But believe me, I do. Uh huh. Then perhaps you're the one. Name your price. What do you tip the beach boy here? Oh, 50, 75 cents. You have it in your swim shorts? Yes. Then as long as you know what you're getting into, you have a deal. I'll take 50 cents, and the bottle imp is yours. So I thought foolishly that was the end of it. Of the thing in the bottle, at least. Well placed with a man whose beliefs or leanings served him right for whatever happened to him afterwards. Even after our divorce, and Leisha remarried Valentine Stavrasis, I was able to put it out of my mind. He owned the devil's curse, not she. And with all his great self-earned wealth, she should be happy. And then seven years later, fate took us all in hand again. It was hard not to know of Valentine's massive and probably fatal attack. It was headlines in all the papers. Would you leave us alone, please? Val? Huh? Val, can you hear me? What? What? It's Leisha. 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 Thank God. Leisha. Find someone. Find someone. Find someone for what? I can feel it. I'm going to die. But not... Not with the black imp waiting for me in the bottle. I'm afraid. Got to sell. Got to save me. It's all my, right, Val. My, I'll buy it. Huh? And promise you to get rid of it. I, I don't need it anymore. How much... What did you pay for it? Uh, Val. Um, Fifty. Cents. Just let me look in my bag. I, I'll open it and give you less. Whatever change I have. Oh. Hurry. Hurry before it's too late. Oh, God, I haven't any change. There's no change. I gave it to the taxi man. Please. Please. Oh. Help me. I can feel the hot, stinking breath. His wings folding about me. Don't let me die. Die forever in torment. Oh, thank God. I, I, a little miracle. Here, Val, stuck in the corner of my purse, a penny, a cent. All I have. Oh, no. Now you can wear him about your neck. Oh. I'm safe. I'm safe. I can die in peace. As Val died, his lungs unable to sustain their pressure even underneath the oxygen tent, Alicia, without thought, lit a cigarette. It was a week before I could see her in the hospital. And even under sedation and in wet bandages, she was in the agonies of hell. She blurted out the story of the bottle imp and thought she was already in hell and dead. Thank God there was something I could do for her. Leisha. Uh, Leisha, it's Barry. No, I'm dead. In hell. Curse came true. No, not yet, honey. Not yet. You're still alive. Um, you can still sell him. It's too late. I bought him at the bottom. One cent. I'm stuck. No, don't you believe it. Lucky you happen to know an old, loving numismatist. Uh, all right, all right, you don't like the word coin collector. Lots of coins in the world worth less than a cent. A lira, the Cambodian sen, the Japanese yen. Oh, I could go on forever. I can't. can't bury. Not after all. Was agony. I couldn't wish it on anyone. Can't sell the 
like him. You can and you will. To me. For a lira I just happen to have with me. No. I've made you suffer enough. It's all over. Don't worry. In my business, I can find a coin cheap enough to pass the imp in the bottle on to someone who really deserves it. Oh. And I'll fix it so he can't get rid of it. Barry. Barry, what? I couldn't I love you enough? Sell me that imp first. There. Hang on to the coin. It's your passport to whatever there is after for you. Oh, oh Alicia. Maybe someday I'll meet you. Alicia. Alicia. Oh. She's gone. Oh, darling. I hope you've found peace at last. Barry's business as a coin collector grew. And paramount among his collection of coins were all the ones of lowest value in the world. Sufficient of them to make change for any larger denomination. Sooner or later, he knew he would meet someone who really deserved the imp in the bottle. And sooner or later, he did. I'll be back shortly. Understand that a power hungry dictator bought the imp in the bottle for one of Barry's near worthless coins. Fortunately, he never was able to use the money he amassed to buy the weaponry with which he planned to conquer a continent. He died rather suddenly of an obscure disease, undiagnosed. But it may have occurred to you that the lower the price of the imp, the sooner the owner seemed to depart this life. Our cast included William Redfield, Joan Loring, Ian Martin, Santos Ortega, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... (laughs) 